Bitcoin's Lightning Network is a really, really big deal, not just in the world of Bitcoin, but in the world of commerce as a whole. And in this video, I want to take a minute and explain exactly why. Now, if you've heard of Lightning Network, you already know that it is a second layer protocol on top of the Bitcoin protocol, which allows small and fast payments with absolutely no custody, meaning I can pay directly to you, assuming I'm using Lightning Network in a non-custodial way, and you can directly receive the payment absolutely instantly with no settlement time and no fraud, no chargebacks. Now, you might be confused into thinking and you might be forgiven for thinking that that's essentially all it is. It is a way to scale Bitcoin and make it more scalable and allow more processing and more transactions. After all, people love to throw around the statistic that Bitcoin as a protocol on the main chain can only do about seven transactions per second, whereas Visa and MasterCard have a theoretical capacity of, I don't know, like millions of transactions or tens of thousands. I think it's 24,000 transactions per second. And yes, Lightning Network is originally designed to be a way to scale up the Bitcoin protocol so that it can do smaller transactions faster and not have to bloat up the blockchain in the way that many other protocols like Ethereum currently are experiencing. But that is not all that Lightning Network can do, and it is not all that Lightning Network has to promise. But in order to explain that to you and explain why that is such a bigger deal, first, let's take a moment and understand how payments work on the internet as a whole. Now, as of right now, the way that payments work on the internet is that we have taken the very old financial system of Visa, MasterCard, credit cards, American Express, and all those other dinosaurs, and we've adapted it to the internet. Basically, putting credit cards online, allowing us to charge credit cards online. Now, there are a lot of problems with that, ranging from credit card theft to fraud, chargebacks, and a lot of other nefarious and weird crime. But one of the biggest things that most people don't realize unless they run a business online is that this is wildly expensive. In fact, in order to pay for maintaining those old networks and cover all the different fraud and chargebacks that these companies are forced to stomach, they charge an average of 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. Now, that might seem like it's not a lot, especially in a world where Apple and Google and Amazon take 20 to 30% of the revenue of app developers. And yeah, it's not a huge amount to pay 2.9% and 30 cents. But here's the thing about that. Because it takes a minimum of 30 cents per transaction and 2.9%, there is so much commerce that could and would happen that is just not scalable. It is just not profitable to do very, very small transactions on the internet. And we don't realize this because our entire world has been shaped around these assumptions. You don't pay Netflix and Spotify and Apple Music and Masterclass by how many minutes you watch or how many courses you watch necessarily. You end up by paying them the maximum amount that they can get from you every single month. In other words, what they do is figure out what a heavy user would use and then they charge you that. Likewise, you don't pay Uber for every single meter or foot that you travel. You end up paying a fixed fee, a minimum fee every time that you get into a cab, and then you pay by distance. A lot of other services such as Amazon have solved this problem by just charging you at the end of every month. You might notice if you download an app on the Apple Store, you may not actually get charged until a week or more later because they're waiting to see if you're gonna do more transactions so that they can save on that 30 cents transaction fee. Now imagine a world in where we could charge based on use and there was no limit to how small of a transaction was actually profitable. Imagine if every single time you upvoted something on Reddit, you paid with a very, very, very small microtransaction of a fraction of a penny. Imagine if on YouTube, instead of being forced to watch ads, you directly contributed to creators by paying a fraction of a penny for every single second you watched. Imagine what would happen if everything in your life were charged solely based on your consumption. You take your kid to the fancy gymboree, you're charged for exactly how many minutes you're there. 
you clock in at work if you're an hourly worker and you're paid by the minute or by the hour every single minute that you are there. These are just a few possibilities, but they are not far-fetched futuristic scenarios. These are actual things happening on the Lightning Network, and they're made possible by the incredible, scalable, and ridiculously cheap payment infrastructure that Lightning Network provides. So yeah, there's already a Reddit alternative where you can earn pennies every time someone reads your posts. There's already podcast streaming services where you can pay directly to the creator, either by tips or every time you stream their content, and pay them by second of content consumed. People are even working on different models where you can pay per blog post, pay per second that you browse someone's website, and on and on and on. And again, I want to underscore the big idea here because none of these business models, none of these revenue models were possible when all we were using was credit cards and PayPal and anything built on the legacy financial system. So is Lightning Network a way to scale up Bitcoin by taking more transactions off the blockchain? Well, yes, but it's so much more. It's a revolutionary way to look at our business models, whether that be streaming, coaching, hourly labor, getting a massage or anything, and reimagining what it would look like if we only paid for what we used. It's empowering businesses all over the world to conduct business no matter how small the transaction. So if you are a vendor selling tamales in the street in Mexico, it really never made sense for you to accept credit cards because a tamale might cost 50 cents and you're going to pay 70% of your money to the credit card company. Not to mention the fact that probably your users in much of the developing world do not have access to banks and credit cards, but we'll leave that aside for a different video. With Lightning Network, however, you can conduct this business. And I want you to think about how much commerce is happening in the world that really only makes sense with cash and all the various problems that are presented by cash. Now imagine if all of that commerce starts to move on to Lightning Network. And now you get just a taste of the incredible possibilities that Lightning Network is unlocking for commerce all over the world and not just on the internet. So those are just a few of my thoughts on why Bitcoin's Lightning Network is such a big deal. But I'd love to know in the comments below, what do you think about Lightning Network? Do you think that it's still something that is not ready for prime time, something that's too confusing, or is it something that you really see as being mass adopted? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and check out our website for all kinds of cool content as well. Take care.